All right, guys, it's fresh on my mind right now. We've been ordering baits nonstop to get started on the season. But if you have not already, go check out Shop Carl's. This video right here is sponsored by Shop Carl's. If you have not used the code Welcher10, you can still get $10 off your first order of $25 or more. And I've been on there like every single day. We've got packages coming in every single day. So go check out Shop Carl's and we're about to go fishing. What's going on? We got a special one today, at least special for me. This is the lake that I grew up fishing on. I'm talking about probably the first place I ever was on a boat, ever fishing off the bank, anything this is it right here not only that it is one of the most special small little local lakes not only because of that but because it's overran pretty much by now with spotted bass but some special stuff happens when this water gets stained up as you can see behind me we got some stained water and those large mouths just show up so it's a really really fun time of year to fish it's really always been my favorite time of year to fish was from that december january february march anytime this water stained up i love fishing on this lake like absolutely love it and this is literally like i said where i learned to bass fish so today we just got a couple of our favorite baits you know th this is where i kind of decided on my core five or six confidence lures to tell you the truth you know vibrating jigs have always been huge here jigs have always been huge here and cranking buzz baits topwater frogs all that type of stuff that plays here i mean i still throw it to this day because this lake is extremely diverse you can be very very versatile here there's almost no bait that you can't catch a fish on here every single day if you want to go drop shotting or you want to go throw a big giant spook or big swim baits or tiny little crank baits or jerk baits or anything you can catch them on any bait on this lake any day like it literally that's how it works here such a good lake i love fishing here and today we're going to kind of walk through kind of why i have these confidence lures because this is where i learned to fish first place i started fishing tournaments first place that you know i really spent a lot of time in day after day after day and learned how conditions kind of move fish one of the most important things you could do is have time on the water in consecutive days because if you go today and then go again in in a week and then go again in a week and then go again in a week so you went four times in a month but if you went four days in a row, I feel like you're gonna gain more information and gain more knowledge because you can see how those fish change day to day and how the conditions actually make those fish move and differ in water color and water level and all this stuff from day to day because you know the fish are kind of in the same mode. So this is one of the first lakes that I really got to put those consecutive days on the water in and really learn how that position fish and move fish. So today should be a fun one. Y'all gonna see uh, some dock fishing maybe a tiny bit of grass fishing not much not really time of year for that but for the most part we're gonna be fishing shallow grinding i got vibrating jigs i got a dt6 right there i got um, a couple swim jigs a couple chatter baits and a big old flipping jig so let's go see if we can't catch a bass or two so you know jig fishing is kind of one of those things where everybody differs you know some people like little finesse ball head jigs we like big giant flipping jigs some people like to throw, you know, casting jigs on 12 pound test. And I get, I understand it all. But the main reason why my standard line for a jig is 20. And then I go up from there, like 20 is like the bare minimum. And then I go up from there because all these docks and stuff that I grew up casting under are not floating docks. These are wooden kind of pole docks and they have a lot of cross bars and cross members and stuff like that. So for me, most of my casts are over or around some pretty gnarly cover. You know, there's screws and nails and stuff sticking out of these docks and all these crossbars and cross members. So for me, 20 is the baseline. And that's something that has just kind of carried over forever. You know, like if I'm on a really clear lake, like if I go to a lake like Smith Lake or Lake Martin or any of these super clear Highland Reservoirs where you have a lot of floating docks and you're not going to be dealing with cables too much, I'll drop down from there. But my standard jig line has been 20 and on up ever since i started fishing because i started fishing over here because you start throwing 14 15 pound test under these docks you will get your feelings hurt every once in a while and usually the ones that hurt your feelings are the big ones because it's hard to get them out of there so that's why i mean that's just kind of one of those things that this is the lake i learned to bass fish on and it's carried over and there's so much stuff like that that for my entire time or career whatever you want to call it bass fishing there's so many things that i still do to this day just because that's how i learned it on this lake so i mean you can see right there 
crossbar, cross member going under that dot. And I skip under there and you know if I hook a five or six pounder, I'm definitely gonna have to rub the line on that crossbar to get him out because he's not just gonna swim out and come over here and you know let me put my hands on him. So when you were like 12 getting dropped off over here on the in the bandit, like what what were you throwing? Yep, so this is a really good question. Hunter brought up the bandit. Y'all seen that in a lot of my videos. I love that boat, and the reason I love that boat so much is because that's literally what happened. When I was 12 years old, I would be over here. You know, my parents would drop me off. I had some really good friends of mine. They're still good friends of mine. Their grandmother lived on the lake right around the corner, and that was kind of our home base. Like, we could go over there and hang out, you know, stay the night over there sometimes, but for the most part, we just had somebody that was close to us just in case anything happened. But I'd get dropped off in the bandit by myself if my parents were at work you know at 12 13 14 15 years old i'd get dropped off over here and be able to fish around i had some rules couldn't go too far away from the ramp i'd stay pretty close but back then i was throwing a shaky head a lot a spinner bait a lot and a buzz bait a lot and i have since graduated from the shaky head to the jig but the shaky head still catches them still catches them really really good too actually but at first, I mean, I can remember my first big buzz bait bite. I can remember my first two big buzz bait bites. You know, one of them I was throwing a double bladed buzz bait, a black one, on a riprap bank on the main lake out here. It was like a three and a half pounder. But God, dog, I remember it. Cause like, I hadn't had, I caught like one fish all day and I'd been out here, I didn't know how to fish at all. So I'm out here and I throw that thing down I'm parallel in this bank and it's just the most crazy, like over the top, blow up, like it was just, crushed it and i set the hook on him i get him all to the boat and i swing the boat it's like a three and a half pounder so that was like my first giant topwater bite as far as i remember then not long after that i caught a five something on a buzz bait and that was like my first two really big ones that bit a buzz bait on this lake whenever i was out here by myself for the five pounder i actually had my older brother with me but you know it was just you can remember that stuff you know and it all happened on this lake and i know the exact banks it happens on i still fish them to this day so really really cool but it was a buzz bait, a shaky head, spinner bait for a little while. I used to throw rattle traps. I used to throw anything that they sold at Walmart or back then I could go to Academy. But you know, that was about the options that I had for buying tackle was whatever they had at Walmart. So but those those were the main few that I fished with at first. Then after I turned 16, 17, 18, started traveling, the vibrating jig got really popular started throwing regular jigs because I realized how much bigger bites I got on full-size jigs. Started throwing a topwater frog. Whenever I was about 13 or 14, started throwing the topwater frog a lot. And um, that started off fishing with a buddy of mine in a farm pond that he had access to. And he had a frog and I didn't at the time. And he made a bet with me that I could win the frog if I did, did a couple things. And I won the frog, 13 years old, maybe 12 years old, and went out to the pond the next day with the frog. It was a tropical white popping frog. and. Ended up catching them so good on it. Lost the heck out of them. I was throwing like 15 pound monofilament. Lost them, lost them and lost them, but caught some really nice ones too. And then from that day on, I've had an addiction to topwater fishing pretty much. So that was whenever the frog fishing started. But whenever I first started fishing over here, you know, it, I didn't throw it a lot because I couldn't get any bites on it. It didn't seem like, but then I figured out exactly where you want to throw it. Let's go catch us one. What do you think? See what we got. Hold up. And now we live a mile from the ramp that you grew up on. Now we live literally one mile from the ramp where I put in at all those times. The ramps changed a lot. There used to be old wooden dock there, old rickety wooden dock. Then there was a pretty poor floating dock, and now there's a decent dock there. Lots of changes to this lake. You know, I've seen it come and go in a lot of different ways. One of the absolute worst ramps on the lake is now one of the best ramps on the lake. You know, that's good. That's really good. You know, you want to see that. You want to see places, you know, progress and get better and better. The fishing, in my opinion, is a lot better than it was when I first started. When I first started, it was absolutely terrible. Like, it took almost no weight to win the tournaments. And then it peaked a lot. It got really, really good for a little while. And then now it's kind of going back downhill just a little bit. But it's still definitely... A really good fishery you can come catch them doing anything you want to do so special to me to live close to it because if i get a bait in i want to try i know that i can come over here and get a bite on it no matter what it is you know all kind i get new baits all the time new rods new reels from all these companies because i like testing stuff i like tinkering and 
this is kind of where it started you know being out here trapped on a little lake by myself in a small little boat you're gonna tinker a little bit you know you ain't got that many lures you ain't got that much stuff to work with you're gonna have to put some stuff together and make some unique stuff and i think i still like to tinker and stuff from back in those early days so a lot of these companies send me a lot of rods and reels and bait and line to try it's really cool to live close to a lake this diverse so i could try it all you know very very efficient Oh, that was a nice one. Man, just missed it. You know, confidence is something that you hear about in bass fishing all the time. Like every tournament, every interview, it seems like every podcast you listen to, you hear about confidence. And you know, I've been fishing here for a while today and have not caught one, but I am so confident in what I'm doing. Like, I feel like every single cast, I'm gonna get a bite. Like, I just I just know what the conditions are for today. I just gotta kinda move around a little bit and figure out exactly where they're biting. But confidence comes from what you have had success doing in the past. That's what generates confidence. And I've had so much success in these exact conditions on tons of different bodies of water that I know just because I haven't got a bite in the first 30 or 45 minutes, that does not mean I'm doing the wrong thing. It just means I'm probably in the wrong area. So I've got five or six different baits. I've cranked a little bit, threw a vibrating jig a little bit, flipped the jig a little bit, and you know, just haven't had any, I've had one bite that was a pretty nice one, but I didn't land him, didn't hook him. But uh, other than that, I've just kind of been eliminating water trying to figure out exactly where they're positioned today because i know this is happening exactly what i'm doing is happening somewhere today i have a ton of confidence that that's true i just have to figure out exactly where and exactly what casts and exactly you know what area of the lake region they're kind of set up in today because i know for sure what i'm doing is going to work just kind of kind of put a couple more pieces of the puzzle together i've got i've got the baits got the watercolor got kind of the depth that i like just really got to figure out where those fish are positioned today because that's the thing that you can't really account for you don't know every single time you go fishing exactly where they're going to be but i just think that's funny because there's a lot of different things that i could be doing right now where if i hadn't had a bite in this long i would be like we got to change we got to move we got to do something different but just there's something about fishing this way for me i've just got so much you know faith in it so much confidence doing it i just know that it's gonna work whenever i whenever i put a couple more pieces of this puzzle together so that's what we're actively trying to do is jump around i just think it's funny that growing up on this lake and fishing in these conditions so many times gives me that much confidence because i mean for me not to have a bite that long and still feel like any cast i could catch one that's that's just huge you know and i mean you see that when you when we go up north with some guys you know that kind of grew up fishing that type of way or we go to florida with guys that you know grew up fishing that type of way or their their main body of work in fishing is under those conditions you see them just have this unwavering amount of confidence in exactly what they're doing and that's why some people have so much success on certain bodies of water certain conditions and stuff like that so i was just thinking about that while i was up here fishing about how much confidence i still have after not catching anything for a while so i thought that was pretty pretty cool but we're gonna change that shortly. We're gonna catch a few. He was yanking at first, dude. Why you gotta laugh? Very enthusiastic. about the day you wanted to go play. What was it? Was it on the lake? Was it a trigger? <clears throat> what, what what brought that to your mind? So, from as early as I can remember, you know, being 10 or 12, that's all I ever said that I was gonna do was be a pro fisherman. So, 
but I, I don't really remember the first time that I thought it. But I do remember the first time I was out here on the lake with my dad. I don't know how old I was. I was probably nine, 10, and I watched the tournament blast off. They still have the same tournament. It was out here on a Tuesday evening at five o'clock. I saw the boats take off. I saw how serious they all took it. That from then on, that's all I want to do is fish tournaments. That's it. Tell, tell us about your first ever tournament. I don't know. I can't remember. How old were you? I mean, probably had to be about 15 before I could really start fishing them, you know, so I couldn't really fish many till I was 16, you know, wasn't, wasn't nobody going to drive me down there at the right time. So after I was 16, I could really start fishing them, but I fished some at 15 whenever I could get out there or whatever, or had a buddy drive us or something. But for the most part, probably 16, I guess. One of my first ones I ever fished actually at 16 on this lake, I won. Like first one that I drove to. Were you, were you good then? No, not good now, but I was worse then. Everybody else was too though. I caught them fishing extremely similarly to what I did today. We caught some on chatterbait, like four or five on a chatterbait, had one big one on a chatterbait, and I caught like a four pounder on a frog at the very end of the day. Why do you think that you've had so much success having like 10 minutes ago in a tournament and somehow pulling out a big one? I don't know. It does seem like the last, I'll say 30 minutes of a tournament, I catch more than my expected value of fish in that time. Like, like that St. John's. Yeah. I mean, it happens a lot. Like, it happens a whole lot. I just seem to catch them with five or ten minutes to go very, very often. Like, I do it all the time. So, I think it's uh, one thing about at that point in the day, typically I'm on a pattern or I'm running the most obvious, best-looking stuff on the way in. Or... I just don't give up. Like I don't go in five minutes early unless I've like got them, got them. So it just, it happens like very, very often. I think it's just because I put myself in that position to do it and other people maybe don't. The, the first time that I realized that Kyle was like a bass fishing addict, it was my first, it was my 14th birthday party. And I had it on this lake and Kyle showed up with rods and reels to my birthday party and fished the entire party. <laughs> it wasn't the entire time. It was the entire I did a party. Bit of that. And then also a little tip from that birthday party. Kyle is the only person that brought me a birthday present. God. I don't know. Not very. All right, so earlier I was talking about how confident I was in these conditions, making me, you know, kind of want to keep doing what I'm doing and just move around areas of the lake. And I have now had one decent bite, two decent bites, but have not hooked either one of them. They're biting it funny. My buddy's caught two small ones. This is the time where being too confident in what you're doing turns into being stubborn and that's definitely what I have done here for the past hour or so just been kind of stubborn so I got a couple other things I'm confident in when the water is this color so we're about to move around a little bit try to make an adjustment that actually works we have to do something completely different and that's what it's gonna take that's what we should have already done but I just like fishing the way that I've been fishing so much that's hard to do it so about to make a little move all right, Hunter been filming all day and I ain't caught nothing. Then I finally caught a little spotted bass. Caught a vibrating jig. You know, one of the, like I said, one of the first baits I ever really had a lot of confidence with out here was the dang vibrating jig. But it's tough to catch them out here. That's the fish I was talking about earlier that has kind of taken over this lake. The spotted bass have came in and really hurt the population of largemouth. But still good population of both. 
and the spots are starting to get pretty big like that one that i just caught pound and a quarter close to pound and a half maybe and it was like that's a small one now you know back when i first started fishing here a spot like that was actually a pretty good one now that's actually a, a smaller one What happened there? I blew his mouth open. He came all the way out. I've been murking a little one. Terrible. There we go. He ate that sucker. Another nice spot of bass. About all we can catch today. But that's a pretty nice one. Well, sometimes it pays to just uh, not make adjustments. No, I'm just kidding. We definitely have changed areas of the lake, changed kind of our approach, the depth we're fishing, the water clarity, and a lot of the structure we're fishing. So, made some adjustments, but still fishing relatively shallow and in some similar areas. We'll Started getting a couple bites. Y'all please follow me on TikTok. All right, so we made a little adjustment. We got us a couple bites, but for the most part, fish kind of dumb today. But it's what I wanted to do. Like it's what I enjoy, what I like. What are you looking at me crazy for? Just looking at you. Hoping that uh, you don't do this. You know, just because you think they're gonna be biting a certain way and they're not, you got to make some adjustments. So. It's always cool though coming out here on small little local lake the original small little local lake for me not the original lake that i called a small little local lake though but always fun getting out here having a good time hope y'all enjoyed that told a little bit of my story about how i started fishing what happened to get me into bass fishing the way that i'm into it lost another one see i think i bent my hook or something i think i went to skip under dock and bent my hook because I missed like four on this exact one today and I caught the only one that bit a different one. So, might have bent my hook. Yeah, it's definitely bent. That's the only reason I've lost them. But anyways, appreciate y'all watching this. A little bit of my background on this lake and why I wanted to move back close to it. So, appreciate y'all watching. We'll see y'all.